Welcome. Today we're going to talk about three things to improve communication in your relationship. And I know you think you know what I'm going to say about being open and honest, and those things are true. But I've got some tips that you don't often think about. So stay till the end, but first, let's run the show reel. <laughs> okay, tip number one. How are you approaching your partner, your friend, or your family member? Are you coming from an open and honest and loving place? Because this is the thing, as we talk about, let's be honest with each other and let's be open with each other. But then we get a little bit triggered or we come in with a defensive energy or we come in with an energy of expecting X, Y, or Z from our partner or our friend or our relationship because they've always been that way in the past. So when you start coming to have a conversation with a partner, be really mindful and open. So first of all, know how do they communicate? In other words, do they need a little bit of time to think about things? Where maybe you say, hey, I wanna have a conversation about the kids, or I wanna have a conversation about this disagreement we had last week, or I want to have a conversation about, can we have that in a few days? because some introverts and some people like to think about what they want to say, how they want to communicate in a conversation and being sprung upon by someone like me who is an extrovert who's like, hey, this is on my mind right now and I really want to talk about this. I've been thinking about it and I need to get it off my chest and by the way, I'm going to process out loud. Be mindful, open, loving, and really conscious of what the other person needs as you come forward to communicate. Number two, Pay attention to their body language, not only their words and their tone. The thing is 80% of our communication, kind of varies depending upon what experts you talk to, is nonverbal, which means our tone, our body language, and the energy that we bring underneath that. So this is why we shouldn't have serious conversations over text or over Snapchat. Because what happens is we start losing the intention. And so if I read a text and I'm in a crabby mood, I might misread that text and put my crabbiness into what the other person is saying, even if the person was saying over text like, hey, I feel a little bit upset about this morning. Can we have a conversation later? Meaning to be open and light and just saying like, hey, I just want to touch base and be open and honest with you. And I might read that and be like, what the heck? What's their problem? Right? So have good body language and watch other per people's body language as well. We're really great up here in the Northern regions like Minnesota, Canada, of pretending like everything's fine when it's not and being very passive aggressive about things. So in other words, we don't say things directly. We just pretend like everything's okay when it's really not. So that's why it's so important to really pay attention to the energy and the intuition of what you're sensing from the other person. Now, you do have to differentiate that from projecting. You don't wanna project what you think the other person is feeling or what you think the other person should be responding or what you think the other person is going to say, right? So there's a fine line between differentiating what is your projection and what is actually their energy that they're bringing to the table. Maybe they're upset and they're not willing to talk about it yet. Or maybe they're upset and they do wanna talk about it, but are afraid they're gonna get judged or made fun of. Or maybe they already feel unlovable and vulnerable and it doesn't feel like a safe time or space to talk about it quite yet. So when you're sensing that from someone, really pay attention to what they want, what they need, and create a happy, safe space. In other words, if you do want them to communicate what's going on, create a space where it feels comfortable, where they know that you're reaching out in the most loving and appreciative manner. In fact, if you know what their love language is, start showing that you love and care about them in their love language. And be patient and allow them to come to you or give them some time and bring the conversation up again. Like, hey, it seemed like the other day when you said everything was okay, it wasn't. So I just wanted to touch base again and just see, was I misreading you or is there something going on that I can support you with? 
And that kind of open and honest communication and clarity while creating a safe and loving and supportive space is gonna go miles in your relationship, whether it's your friendship, your family members, or a romantic relationship. But the final challenge I see is sometimes even when we come from loving spaces and we create safety and we create love, is then we don't listen to understand. And what do I mean from that? What I mean is someone says something that triggers our own emotional feeling or makes us feel unworthy or unloved or like we didn't do enough or that we are not enough or it triggers some kind of past issue in an old relationship that we're not even consciously aware of. Because all behavior, all learning and all change comes from our unconscious or subconscious mind. So often our reactions emotionally and physically come from a spot that we might not even be aware of, that we might even not know that our brain is accessing. So when we listen to understand truly what our partner is saying or what our friend is saying or what our family member is saying and think about how they usually communicate, we can really start to understand and reflect back on what they're saying. And you can use active listening skills if you choose. Like, so help me understand, what I hear you say is, is that correct? Just to make sure I'm clear, is this actually what you're saying? Because this is what I've heard, right? When we listen to understand, we create a sense of safety, of openness, and an ability to be vulnerable in a way that may not be possible otherwise. So to summarize, when we use body language, when we use active communication skills, when we listen with love and empathy and pay attention to the energy and everything around us, we can have so much better communication in all of our relationships. So remember that you are love, you are loving, you are lovable. I'd love to hear in the comments below. What's your favorite tip? See you next time.